Hi everybody, it's uh, John back again with another model in box review. Today we're looking at a military vehicle. Um, today I'm looking at the Heller AMX 30105 uh, medium tank. Um, this kit has some interesting things to say about it. It's quite old. It's getting on now. It's you know it's. It, as I said, it is quite old. I'll just take you through the boxing history uh, as we normally do. I'll just take that image off. That's an AMX 30105. I think it's on exercise somewhere in France, but uh, we'll go to the, the original release. The original release of this kit was released in 1976. For the kits, yeah, it is getting on a bit. This was the original box. Um, a lot of Heller kits, armour kits, were released in boxes similar to this um, in the 70s. Um, and obviously the AMX-30 is no exception. Um, the thing that's interesting about military kits is that I've built quite a number of different companies' military kits, but I've never built a Heller armoured vehicle before. I have built their Willys Jeep and trailer, but it was in Airfix boxing, not in Heller boxings. But it, it is the original Heller kit, the, the Willys Jeep and trailer in 70, 76 scale, I think it is. Um, or it might be 72nd scale, I can't remember now. Um, but I did build that kit and it, it is quite nice. It's quite a nice little kit. So I'm expecting this this particular kit to fit equally as well as that one did. It was quite nice. 1976 release. That's the Amex 30 in the original type uh, Heller release boxings from the 70s. The kit then went to 1979 where Heller um, changed their boxings to a black surround instead of a yellow surround and this type of boxing um, went through probably right through until I would say the late 80s. Um, this is a 172nd scale AMX 30 Canon the 105. They actually called it uh, 105mm this time now instead of just an AMX 30. Um, uh, and that is how the, the boxings came out in the late 70s and going into the 80s. 1979 issue, that one. Then in 1979, they also released um, an additional sprue to the original kit, um, changing the cannon and some of the aspects of the kit itself to the AMX-30 bi-tubes. Now, I do believe that the bi-tubes was a 20mm anti-aircraft mounting for the AMX-30 tank. But it utilised the same chassis, and the kit actually utilises the same chassis as what comes with the standard 105 cannon. But it has, I'm sure it has a different turret, and obviously the, the main guns themselves are anti-aircraft with this massive uh, radar um, guidance arrangement. So they were actually anti-aircraft radar-guided anti-aircraft weapons. Uh, but mobile, of course. Again, this is in the 1979 boxing. You can see the black surround on the kit itself with a yellow label here. 1979 went through to 2001. I think the kit was took off the market for a number of years in, in the 90s, uh, but it was re-released in this style of box, and this is a style of box that I've actually got um, to review on. Uh, this is a 2001 image. Um, yeah, not an awful lot of difference went through with the boxings, but they did try a, a several different types of ways of, um, uh, like formats of selling the kit as well. 2001 image there, they changed the image on the box, a nice photograph of the AMX-30 in a mountainous scene, probably on exercise again. Um, and I, I like the box on this. Um, 2001 lent itself to 2009, um, and again they changed the style of the Heller boxings. A lot of models from Heller in the late 2000s were sold in boxing similar to this and they usually had um, a little starter pack which involved maybe two paints, a brush and a, and a tube of glue. Um, interesting also to note that it's marked um, 74 parts. But Heller utilised this style of boxing with the big massive flag on the left hand side with Heller written on it and the white surround around the superimposed image. Um, with the little model serial number in the top right hand corner. Um, I do remember building a couple of aircraft kits so this definitely did follow on in the, in the 2000s um, even with aircraft kits and car models with this style of boxing. 
2009 went through to 2013 and again you go back to the original format picture but it's a new type of box and this was the starter pack um, which was released in 2013 that comprised four paints as you can see a tube of glue and a brush the kit was actually laid into like a, a plastic tray and the whole thing was usually covered in um, in cellophane but the box is actually laid loose in a, in a yellow plastic tray that, and that, uh, it's, as I said the whole lot's covered in cellophane so there you go that's the 2013 release boxing um, also they did the non-starter pack which just basically comprised of the box that you got in the starter pack tray um, that was also co-released in 2013 as well I'll just leave you with a nice image of a AMX30 105 in modern French colours. Um, these are the colours that come with an awful lot of French military vehicles um, that are in service of the French army, uh, I would say post-2005. Um, but I'm building a Leclerc at the moment, it's exactly the same colours as this, and I'll probably be building this kit in the same colours. Um, but we'll talk about we'll talk about the kit in a minute as I do the inbox review. I'll just um, I'll just bring the camera round. I'll just angle this down a little bit so you can see what's going on. And oh, there we go. And there. Is that uh, is that the, is that going to work? I'm hoping it's going to work. <laughs> That's the kit and. go Let's zoom out. right that's the kit um, in the boxings as I said before I think this is 2009's release um, it's not an easy kit to open up but I'll, I'll try and get it because the box on this kit is quite tight there we go it's quite a small box you can see the, my hand over the box is quite small inside and everything I'll just um, I'll just take the sprues out and uh, we'll go through some of the bits in a minute. And I want to go through because I've had a look. I've done some research on this kit to find out if there are any issues with it from some of the pro modelers and pro build reviewers. You know that you know these people that get models sent to them by different companies to do inbox reviews and you know to say how fantastic their goods are and everything. Um, and there, there are well, the kit has two major issues. Um, and they're, they're not difficult to spot. First of all, we'll go through the plans. The plans are nicely folded up into a nice little, um, a nice little, almost hand-sized plan there. Um, and we'll open them up so you can have a look. The kit actually... Now, never seeing a Hella military vehicle plan before, I'm guessing this is probably typical of a Hella military vehicle, um, because it has Hella traits all over it from other types of, uh, other genres of models that I have built from Hella before. Some of their military aircraft are, uh, they're not exactly the same as this, but the format of the plans, the way they're laid out is similar. Um, the thing I like about these plans is that They've, they, they've incorporated quite a number of parts into each step, but the steps seem to be quite um, practical in terms of, you know, keeping all the various parts of various sub-assemblies into each step so that you don't, you know, end up putting bits on different parts and bits on sub-assembling different bits and everything else. The kit comes in five different steps, the fifth one being the decal and paint guide. Um, and that it's quite an easy set of plans to follow. Uh, there are some hints and tips on the sides here, all down the sides. The problem is, um, let me just put my glasses on and see if I can read some of this, because a lot of these plans that they've got here are in different languages. Um, yeah, you've got, you've basically got um, different, they're like different guides in photo form here down the sides of the instruction leaflet and they're on both sides here you've, you've got you've actually got eight different um, instructions that give you also photographic evidence of what they're actually trying to say but basically they're, they're just it's the usual stuff read instructions um, 
carefully cut out parts, prepare parts and sand stuff down, all this type of stuff. It's all general purpose things that most modelers know anyway. Um, the first step incorporates the manufacture of the majority of the turret, um, including the gun, but the gun doesn't seem to go into place until step two when you finish putting all the other bits and bobs on. But it looks to me like in step one they're asking you to do various sub-assemblies. Um, and then in step two, they actually show you what the sub-assemblies are. So I would recommend that you do read, exactly as it says in the top left-hand corner, do read the instructions very carefully um, and decide what is actually a sub-assembly before you commence to the second stage. Um, because what often is the case with some of these models is that sub-assemblies have to be built separately because if you put them in place prior to when the instructions are telling you to, it might make it difficult or damn near impossible to put something else on that comes in the next stage. Um, the second stage is to put the body shell of the, the main body shell upper surfaces of the tank uh, with some bits and bobs that go on it there. You can see them there. Um, you can also see the sub-assembly for the turret there. I can just see that it's nicely coming into focus today actually. It doesn't usually. Um, and the gun barrel, I think, goes into the front of the turret there, and there's various sub-assemblies, as you can see there. And step three, you've got the chassis assembly. Um, I think that's done in two separate halves. Uh, and I think, I'm not 100% certain, but I think they intend you to build the return rollers and the idler sprockets on the chassis sides, and then put the the main road wheels and the drive sprockets onto the lower chassis pan in section three as a different sub-assembly. Um, it's clearly evident, it's evidently marked there, that's exactly what you do. And in section five, you put the chassis sides, that's really unusual because it appears that you put the chassis sides before you commence to section four, but it doesn't actually tell you that. <laughs> Some of these plans from different foreign manufacturers are quite, they're quite difficult to understand exactly what the sequence is. But I'm guessing that in section four you'd put the chassis sides with all the, um, the idler and return wheels back in, into the base of the body shell. And then you put the top surfaces of the body with the turret and the rear section there. You can see that in section four. Um, the rear section goes in place and then you put the tracks on the body shell. Sorry, put the tracks on the chassis rather, um, utilising a hot knife, and then you assemble the top to the bottom. But you put the tracks on before you put the top to the bottom. Um, it's a bit ambiguous as to, you know, it's difficult to understand exactly what what they mean and what they mean the sequence to be. But uh, that's how I would read it and how I would probably tackle the task. Um, in section 5 you've got the paint and decal guide plan there, it's quite self-evident. The instructions are actually they're quite easily labelled out, you know, they're quite clear. Um, but the actual method of construction and the, the, uh, the, the order in which you build everything in is, is a little bit difficult to understand and what they're trying to get at. The decals, right, we'll just take the dust sheet off because I've got some nice decals here. Well, maybe that's a bit ambitious to say they're really nice. You've got some um, different numbers here, which is just as well, because it's really difficult to read those white numbers that are marked 2 and 3 there. Um, but the other registration numbers and the other decals there seem to be quite clear. They're also marked the serial number of the tank kit, and they're marked hello there as well, so they're obviously made uh, by either in-house by Heller or maybe somebody for Heller, I'm not sure. But the decals seem okay. The, the register on them aren't too bad. But to be honest with you, a lot of the decals in military vehicles, this scale, are um, they're quite... They're usually so small it doesn't really matter how good or bad they are. Um, right, the kit comes with three green plastic sprues. And we'll go through the sprues in a minute. But I just want to draw your attention to one of the major problems with this model. Now, having never built a Heller model, I have no, a Heller uh, military tank, I've, I have no idea how these tracks are going to go together. 
but I have seen some reviews on some of these tracks um, on this kit and they say that the tracks are pretty dire. The finish you get on them is pretty dire and I'm going to be honest with you, they're, they're right up there with 1960s issue Airfix military tanks. They're no better than what Airfix were producing in the 60s. Um, I'm thinking of tanks like the T-34 and the, the Lee and the Sherman. These tracks are pretty terrible, but they've got a funny feeling to them as well. They're quite rigid and um, perhaps rigid is the wrong word. They're, they're quite they're quite a hard rubber. That's probably the best way of putting it. Putting it. They're, they're quite flexible, but they're quite a hard rubber in, in terms of what you'd normally get this style of track. Um, where, they, where I call them a flexible soft rubber, which and, and a flexible soft rubber track with this style of manufacture would give you a much better looking track. And this, I'm guessing, is going to be a pretty god awful looking track, but there's not a lot you can do about it. The inside of the track, as you can see, is plain, absolutely plain, and it's full of sinkholes. Um, the outside of the track, it seems to be okay. The design of the track seems to be, you know. You'd get away with it, but I don't know what that's going to look like. But I have seen a couple of models built up of the AMX30 from Hella, built you know built up with these tracks on it, and I'm going to be honest with you, the tracks look pretty horrific. So we'll put them back in the box. We'll have a we'll have a bit of fun with those in a minute. Uh, sorry, when I'm building them, I'm sure I'm sure they're going to show me what what the score is. The other issue with this kit is because it's um, quite an old mold, 70s molding. Um, the kit is actually, it's, it suffers from what I call waxy detail. Um, on the top of the turret there, you can see the top of the turret. It's not horrendously detailed, is it? And the, a lot of the detail that's on it is not particularly fine. It's quite heavy set and it looks like a lot of these moulds are made in wax. And this is because... The, uh, the injection moulding method used in the 70s by Heller was probably the same as the ones used by Airfix in the 60s, which were what are called medium pressure mouldings. Um, they're not as terrible as some of the low pressure mouldings you get from the Soviet Union and Czech Republic and China and places like that, but they don't lend themselves to producing a really nicely, finely detailed kit. Um, the features are there, you know, you've got you've got all the optics there on that uh, cupola, you've got the hatches, and you know, they're quite faithfully reproduced and everything, but there's just a, an air of, it's like it's got a layer of wax over the top and it just looks a little bit soft, doesn't it? The wheels seem to be quite good, they're quite nicely detailed. You've got some um, some nuts on there that hold obviously the two halves of the wheels together and also you've got a, a very definite road wheel liner to the outside of those tank wheels so they should paint up they should look quite good you know the mantlet on the gun there is quite nice as well it's not that badly molded um, but it is quite soft looking it looks like it's made of wax it does or, or even you know a lot of resin kits have this sort of look about them but the resin um, the resin kits are often better detailed and more sharply detailed. The, the second sprue, um, I'm looking at it now, that's the chassis sides that you put the road wheels, sorry, the returner wheels onto and the, and the idler sprockets. Um, you've got the base of the tank there. It's okay, it's, it's about what you'd normally get from Airfix from the, from the 60s and early 70s. But I mean, the tank kits that come to mind from Airfix that were released in the 70s are kits like the Chieftain, and the Centurion tank and the Crusader tank, and I'm telling you now, I've built all three of those, and the detail and the quality of the kits are an awful lot better than this. Um, one of their best model tank kits that I've ever built is actually the Crusader Mark III, and it's it's a beautiful, beautiful kit. Um, if you're into military armour, the Airfix Crusader is a definite yes. I would definitely recommend that kit. This is the third sprue, incorporates um, what looks like a machine gun and the, the driver's, uh, sorry, the, uh, the second cupola hatch and some of the idler and 
and uh, drive sprockets there and the main gun main guns in one piece which is quite nice but you probably have to drill the end out although the problem with this kit is it's got a it's got a small muzzle at the end which um, is even smaller than the rest of the guns width um, so drilling it, that out is going to be a bit of a nightmare but it yeah it would be interesting the body shell of the tank again it's quite nicely detailed actually you know when i look at some of the reviews that i've seen where they're saying that the detail on the kit is not that good yeah it's not that good in terms of uh, fine detail but the tank i'll be honest with you it's a modern tank and you know they often look like this but the detail actually isn't that bad um i think you know i think it'll paint up all right the grill at the back there seems to be okay the two square grills at the back of the turret housing that's not too bad either and it's it's got some sort of webbing at the side there and you know i think it'll look all right i don't think it's as bad as what a lot of professional model builders are, are making the kit out to be um so yeah but that's that's the spruce the sprues don't look too bad the tracks yeah the jury ought to be out on that one because i think the tracks could be an issue but you know i built i built um models with tracks that look like this i mean i built a female world war one tank a couple of months ago and you know the tracks weren't any worse than that in that they weren't any better than that really either they sort of come out all right so that's the lid going back on the kit so that's the inbox review done i just want to quickly go through um the technical gump on the kit and the options and costs as i normally do um i'll leave you the image there then of the kit um, this won't take very long uh, the model itself is the Heller AMX30 105 MBT, or well, it's actually it's a medium battle tank. It's not a main battle tank. It's a medium tank, and the kit is moulded in 172nd scale. The kit's serial number is 79899, and the kit comes with decals for one version, an AMX 30B105 tank from the First Escadron 1 Peloton Fourth Regiment de Calasse Blinde Biche. From 1978, um, the kit is actually they're telling you to paint the model in, in all green, or overall green. But um, I think you can still use the existing decals because the regiment never changed their markings even to present day. But obviously, the the mark the the colours for the camo pattern on the tanks are more modern camo tanks patterns, and which would be green, brown, and black. The kit comprises 72 parts on three green plastic sprues and two rubber tracks incorporating 74 parts in total. The model length is about four inches by one, sorry, four inches long by one and a quarter inches wide by about a, one and a quarter inches high. Options and costs. There are probably a few more options than people would realise, but they're not exactly what you would think. Um, there are there are actually four major different types of the AMX30 that you can buy a model form. You can buy an AMX30 standard or an AMX30B, which is similar to the, the kit form that you've got with the Heller model. And you can get the 105, which is the kit model. All those kits look fairly similar in, in conform, you know. They do a 155mm SPG, and they also do a 30D and a Roland, and the Roland, I think, is uh, an anti-aircraft platform with a radar-guided anti-aircraft system. I can't remember whether it's missile or whether it's guns, but the the kit, the the, the model variant is actually a Roland, and it's based on a AMX30 chassis. Um, the 155 mm self-propelled gun is basically a fixed um, gun housing based on the chassis of the one of, of the AMX30. Um, and it's just got this big massive gun stuck out the front of the tank. Um, but you can also get what's called an AMX30 EB EBD or a DCA. And the DCA again is the 155mm SPG but it's in a different turret form. Um, so you can get lots of different variants of this kit. And I'm going to incorporate them all as part of the options and costs but I'm going to ID exactly what they are. Now, 176 scale, which is the smallest scale I've seen um, on the market for an AMX30, Deusha do an AMX30 for about five to seven pound, but it's actually the Midori kit, and the Midori AMX30 is, uh, I've seen it advertised for between five and six pounds, so the original Midori kit is actually cheaper to buy usually than the Deusha kit, but they are the same model inside the box. 
In 170 second scale, ADV models produce an AMX 3155 Alpha 1, and that retails for about 15 to 20 pound. Heller obviously do the AMX 3105 and the AMX 30 bi tubes. These kits retail for about eight to 12 pound for the AMX 3105, and about 12 to 25 pound, depending on the quality of the box, um, in the AMX 30 bi tubes. Model miniature do an AMX ALF-1 GCT 155mm SPG and WSW model BOW do an AMX 30D under DCA under Roland. Now I think the AMX 30D is a different kit to the DCA and the Roland model which I think are just options within the same kit. So that's two different models but Obviously with a model miniature as well, you've got three different models, but I've got no pricing details on either of these two um, companies. In 148 scale, Master Fighter do an AMX30 EBD. Again, I haven't got any pricing details on that. But Micro Ace do an AMX30 remote control. Now I don't actually, I've not seen this kit in pictorial format or in real life, so I'm not sure whether they mean remote control as in it's got a wire going out the back of the kit and you can actually control it with a control box in your hand, or whether it's a remote control version of the tank. Um, perhaps somebody can enlighten me in the, in the comments. Um, it would be quite nice, quite good to have that information for other modellers to, to, you know, to be revealed to other modellers. But the, uh, the Micro Ace AMX30 kit retails for about five to ten pound. Otaki also do an AMX30 for about £25. There are more um, options available in 135th. Hella do an AMX30 105, a DCA, a B2 and 155mm SPG, and they all retail for between 18 and 25 quid. quid. Um, they're all these different kits are actually four different boxings of the, of the same chassis, but they have different turrets and different fittings and fixtures. Um, the B2 variant of the AMX30 has probably got an additional sprue because that's the most modern version of the AMX30105. Hobby Boss do an AMX30 ALF 155mm SPG. That retails for between £25 and £30. And Meng model do an AMX30 B, a B2 and a 155mm SPG. And I'm guessing that the B and B2 is a different kit to the 155mm SPG. And those retail for between £35 and £55. Nymix do an AMX30 Roland, which is 50 to £105. Tamiya do an AMX30 under DCA30, two different boxings for about £40 to £85, depending on the quality and how greedy the person is trying to sell it. And there's a company called Tiger Models who do an AMX30 B2, and that kit retails for about £50 to £75. Now then, first impressions and conclusions. This being my first Heller Armour kit that I've ever built, although I did build the Heller Jeep and trailer before, and the plastic seems to be the same. It's well moulded, light and easy to work with. The kit isn't really um, as well detailed as I was hoping to see, but the, the tracks are of particular concern to me. I think they look pretty awful. Um, as to the overall finish on the kit, um, I've seen some pictures and some images and videos of this kit being made up and made up by other modellers. And I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't seen um, I haven't seen this kit built up to look that good. And I don't know whether it's the skill of the modeller concerned or whether it's just the the inadequacy of the kit. I'm not sure. So the jury's going to be out on that one until the final reveal. Um, but it would be quite interesting to see the final reveal and the final, the final um, results that I get from this kit. Um, I do like the look of the AMX30. I think it's a really attractive looking tank um, as tanks go. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see the finished result on this one. So I hope this video has been of some use. Um, I'll be back with another inbox review shortly. Um, I'm going to be doing an inbox review on the, the two different projects I'm doing for the IBM's Buddy Build. So that'll be the next video coming up. Um, I hope to see you soon for that one. And thanks for tuning in. I'll speak to you again later. And don't forget, may all your model projects go smooth. And happy modelling. Bye-bye for now.